Welcome back to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel. We're at the Schwamigan 40 Lifetime GP event. This is race four out of six. I'm not in the series, but if I were, I wouldn't be in last place. Let's jump right in. It's 40 miles in the backwoods of Wisconsin. Oh yeah, don't you think of Wisconsin when you think of mountain biking? I know I do. All right, first thing I wanna point off is how bad Dylan sucks at starts. Started in front of me, boop, there he goes. He's already behind me. All that dude's been talking about all week is how hard the first five minutes of this race is. And I'm starting to think that maybe it's just him. Like maybe he just sucks at starts. Here I am, I pop over to the right side of the trail. It's wide open. So I'm gonna move up a little bit. By the top of this little climb, I'm sitting next to Matt Beers. Keegan Swinson's right in front of him. Payson McMustache is gonna be right here on my left. And I'm pretty happy with where I'm at, considering I wasn't even sure I was gonna make it this far into the race after all the hype that Dylan was talking about this start. All right, our boy, Bonk Bros Matchbox host, Adam Saban, is going to go up the left side of the road right there with the white jersey. He's going to go off the front. Fun fact, he's the only Bonk Bro to have been winning this race at one point. That is, that's awesome. Another interesting thing was hearing Dylan scream at the top of his lungs, Go Adam because I figured he'd be completely out of breath. I mean, what are you doing wasting your breath screaming, dude? This race is a mountain bike race, but as you can tell, there's not much mountain biking very little trail in fact the biggest bummer about this race is that we ride past a lot of awesome looking trail and we just stay on this silly berkey ski trail the whole time kind of a letdown drive 12 hours to ride grass all right funny story about this guy in pink on the start line kyle trudeau who's in the lifetime gp was lined up behind me and I kind of felt bad for him so I, I let him slide up next to me and this guy in pink was like oh you just giving away free spots and I was like yeah to this guy because I think he might beat me and there he is off to the left but to you I think I can beat you so you're gonna stay back there behind me which kind of makes sense because if we all just lined up where we thought we would finish we'd all line up in our respective finishing positions and there wouldn't be all this fighting fighting throughout the race but that's not how it goes because everybody thinks that they can win the race so everybody tries to line up on the front row and that's just not realistic i was talking to brendan johnson a few days before the race and the biggest advice he gave me was to carry as much momentum into these little punchy climbs as possible so you can see me doing that right here so i would pedal pretty hard going into the climb and then all i had to do is carry that momentum up the climb and eventually i do come at come out of it at the same speed as the group, but then I'm slotting in 10 positions higher than I was at the bottom of the climb, which is awesome. So I should probably say thanks to Brendan for giving me that little piece of advice because it definitely helped me save a lot of energy. I was thinking about it often throughout the race of when I could accelerate before those little climbs because you know, us weak guys, we, we gotta save every bit of energy that we can. I mean, I'm, I'm cutting turns, I'm trying to draft as much as possible. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to save all the energy because I need it. There's this interesting aura or bubble around certain riders. In the crit scene, it was around the Legion lead out train. You, you know, riders would would accelerate, but then when they caught up to Legion, they wouldn't pass the Legion train because they have some special power that says, hey, you can't pass me. And in 
I'm assuming all off-road events, Keegan has that special power as well. You could see Caleb Schwartz come bombing up the right-hand side, and he surprisingly slows down right behind you-know-who, Keegan, which is kind of interesting. However, his special powers don't work on me because I blow right past him a few turns later, and what do you know, Dizzle's in the top 10? What the heck? This is awesome. Where is where is Dylan? Pfft, he's behind me freaking getting dropped or something. I'm up here throwing bows with Keegan and Brendan Johnston, the Aussie national champ, the Canadian natty champ. Like, bro, I am racing my bike today. We pop out onto this gravel road and I'm suffering pretty hard. Matt Beers is on the front just destroying us. I get gapped a little bit and Pacey McElveen was behind me and he's like getting mad because the gap is opening and telling me to close the gap. And I'm like, dude, do you think that I'm doing this on purpose? I am not. So as he blows past me and Caleb Schwartz, I just say, dude, what's your VO2? Because I know it's way higher than me and if you're gonna get mad at me for leaving a gap open that I literally was like suffering for, it was just frustrating and silly and the, the pace does slow down. We do catch back up, which was nice and their pacing is right in front of me. So I guess no big deal, but if if he really thought that I was doing that on purpose, He's, he's a goofball. One rider you don't really want to be behind is John Borselman. I was behind him for a second, and he's not exactly known for his off-road riding abilities. Oh, mother so I was going to try to pass him as, as quickly as possible. If you're liking this video so far, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this one. Now, I know I was just dogging Borselman, but he did send a flyer as soon as we hit this gravel road, which was brilliant because he knows that he's probably going to get gapped on the big climb coming up, the fire tower climb. And so he sends it on this gravel road and gets a gap. And now he doesn't have to worry about getting dropped by Keegan on the big climb because he's ahead of Keegan on the big climb. And so Keegan in the lead group will just catch him. And now he's made the lead group. And kudos to him because he made it almost to the sprint finish in that lead group of six. He ends up finishing seventh, but for a guy that's not really good at mountain biking, seventh place in the Schwamigan mountain bike race? Pretty legit, dude. I, I'm impressed. I was proud of him for doing that. All right, this is the bottom of Fire Tower. Not exactly positioned very well. Uh, I do pass Dylan <laughs> very soon because, yeah, I'm just stronger than him, I guess. Uh, which isn't true because if you know he he beat me, but I was riding pretty good um, And wish that I had stayed in the group that he was in which ended up being the second group on the road But this this climb is a little bit harder than I had expected. It's about two and a half minutes long Normalized power was 425 for the whole thing. There are a couple little lulls where uh, it's kind of flat or a little bit downhill, so you do get a little bit of recovery, but I was definitely hurting the last 30, 45 seconds towards the top. Gaps were opening, but I did manage to get and make it into that second group over the top of the climb where a lot of the big names still were. Over the top of this climb, I'm right in front of Cole Patton, who's not very stoked about the gaps that are being opened. So he comes around me and he's kind of saying, hey, what are we doing? Come on. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? Why are you behind me? Didn't you like, were you on the podium of this race last year? Like, what are you doing back here? Dude, come on. So eventually, right not long after the big climb, I was pretty stoked that I was in a group 
over the top of that climb and it wasn't that long after that climb where I got shelled and got gapped on the gravel turny roads uh, a few miles after that climb. I ended up in a group of three or four riders, Daxton Mock, this guy named Bjorn, Caleb Schwartz, Jordan Wakeley, Jordan and Caleb end up riding away from us. I'm in this group for a long time and eventually me and the guy in blue roll in the last, I don't know, six or seven miles together. So for about the last five miles, I was pretty hungry. So I told the guy in blue, hey man, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna pull probably, I'm kind of hurting. Um, and so then I was having a pretty, pretty strong moral dilemma in my head of like, should I sprint this guy? He did just do a lot of work. And then right here, I hear some friends cheering for me, saying go Dizzle. And that was just the push that I needed to say, you know what, this is a darn bike race. And I'm going to sprint this guy because I didn't tell him that he could beat me. And when we signed, when we both signed up for this race, we said we were going to try to beat as many people as we could. And uh, so I sprinted him at the end of the race. I ended up 24th place, about four minutes behind the winner, Keegan. Total stats for the race is a 304 normalized 140 TSS 0.82 intensity factor over the course of two hours and four minutes. I do want to give a shout out to one of my favorite sponsors, The Bicycle Station. You can check out their website in the description below if you're looking at buying some more bike parts or bikes because, you know, you never have enough. Uh, but I do have to say a special thanks to Trey because I was at the shop on the Tuesday before this race and we were swapping all the parts from an old mountain bike to a different mountain bike which ended up being the right choice it was the specialized world cup I've been calling it the mid sus because it doesn't quite have as much travel as their full-on full sus mountain bike and it was a good call and I'm excited to ride this bike some more thanks for watching see you guys in the next one